Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel Yam Hem Ijuka Mix TV 25 Please don't forget to like and subscribe Thank you so much So now let's talk about The scope of philosophical foundation Do you know yourself very well? How do you define your will, intelligence, and your existence? These are the questions that covers the scope of philosophical foundation. So what is philosophy in education? The role of philosophy in education is to provide the student the ability to synthesize, criticize, assimilate, and evaluate a variety and huge amounts of knowledge. It requires deeper understanding of knowledge for us to answer the demands of education. What is philosophy? Philosophy in its literal sense means love of wisdom. Philosophy in its broadest sense is man's attempt to think most speculatively, reflectively, and systematically about the universe in which he lives and his relationship to that universe. It is the reason of existence purpose and responsibilities in life so there are three major fields of philosophy we have the epistemology metaphysics and Axiology. So let's discuss this one by one. So we have the epistemology. It deals with the study of region, structures, methods, nature, limit in veracity, or truth, reliability, validity of human knowledge. The word epistemology is derived from the Greek word episteme which means knowledge and logos which means the study of so imagine a man without knowledge so next we have the metaphysics it deals with questions of reality its nature meaning and existence the word metaphysics is derived from the Greek word meta, which means beyond, and physikon, which means nature, from which is derived the word physics, the science which deals with matter, energy, force, natural laws, and process. Thinking what is beyond is dangerous. So next, we have the axiology. It explores the nature of values. It includes ethics, the study of human conduct, and examines moral values. And aesthetics, that values beauty, nature, and aesthetic experience, often associated with music, art, literature, dance, theater, and other fine arts. The knowledge, the existence, and the values or ethics produce a balanced and artistic creation of God according to the Christian's perspective. So the various perceptions about philosophy. Some students view that philosophy is difficult to understand, impractical, and even out of touch with reality. But John Locke and Karl Marx have viewed that philosophy has an important role in this, in effect, guides people to institute certain changes in the political organizations. So here is the picture of John Locke and Karl Marx.
Others argue that there is no progress in philosophy because even philosophers deeper in their opinion and consequently are quite unable to agree on a certain issue. Differences in opinion can be a means of discovering new ideas, methods, and principles and pieces of evidence. So nonconformism is important in an organization to harmonize the system. The age of naturalism vis-a-vis educational foundations. Naturalism is a doctrine denying anything in reality that has a supernatural significance and any theological conceptions of nature is invalid. Truth can be discovered only through nature. If we can twist the truth which we see physically, how can we validate the truth of beyond? The three philosophers who were considered naturalists were Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes. According to Thales, the most difficult thing in life is to know yourself. So here's Anaximander, and Anaximenes believes that everything is air. So here is the synthesis of naturalism. There is one reality, and that reality is nature. Reality is composed of bodies moving in space. Force or energy is the ultimate reality. Keeping close to the dominated and peaceful ways of nature is the most acceptable way of adhering to the demands of day-to-day life. So art is the work of man. Through art, the nature enhance. The beautification of knowledge and values is only the application that man can do. So the fundamental objectives of naturalistic education are First, the preservation of the natural goodness of man. Example, man's self-sufficiency, his ability to be happy conjoined with the lack of any consistent motive or tendency to cause unhappiness to others, according to Rousseau. Next is education according to nature. It is the constant justification of nature. Next is society anchored upon the natural individual rights of man. Rightness of right things such as courage, temperance, justice, or wisdom. The virtues and actions that contribute to the good life and the activities intrinsic to the good life are naturally right, according to Aristotle. The main contribution of naturalism to the educational method was its emphasis on making the child the center of the educative process. So the stages of development from infancy to adolescence. Man, his dignity, rights, and duties. True dignity is in virtuous living. The sample of this is the satisfaction of Abraham Maslow. The dignity of the human person requires that every man enjoys the right to act freely and responsibly. People are morally responsible for what they do. Free will fact that humans do not have free will because their actions are causally determined. Whatever is opposed to life itself, such any type of murder, abortion, genocide, euthanasia or willful self-destruction, prostitution, the selling of women and children, and treating men as mere tools for profit, all these things are infamous indeed. They poison human society but they do more harm to those who practice them than those who suffer from injury. Moreover, they are a supreme dishonor to the Creator.
sense of responsibility and living conditions. Man is more precise for what he is than what he has. That's why they put more concern on what others can tell or having an attitude of hoarding. The man who does more than he is paid for will soon be paid for more than he does, according to Napoleon Hill. Man is the source, the center, and the purpose of all economic and social life. That's why every man is called to full development. The one who is responsible of oneself is you. Human beings are totally free only when they are completely in the fullness of their rights and duties. The same can be said about society as a whole. So dictation is the enemy of freedom. So don't pamper the child. It is not what you do for your children, but what you have taught them to do for themselves that will make them successful human beings, according to Ann Landers. Cultures are the expressions of the meaning. Different cultures are basically different ways of facing the questions of the meaning. Different beliefs and practices create different interpretation of questions. Knowledge leads to unity, but ignorance leads to diversity. Man who was created for freedom bears within himself the wood of original sin, which constantly draws him towards evil and puts him in need or redemption. Man tends towards good but he is also capable of evil. He can transcend his immediate interest and still remain bound to it. The vulnerability of man to temptation because man is weakest. Man needs God for reminder as well as husband needs wife. No authentic progress is possible without respect for the natural and fundamental right to know the truth and live according to the truth. The satisfaction of human needs is a strict demand of justice. It is a strict duty of justice and truth not to allow fundamental human needs to remain unsatisfied and not to allow those burdened by such needs to perish. This is according to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So our basic needs include food, water, shelter, and clothing. A man is alienated if he refuses to exceed himself and to leave the experience of self-giving of the formation of an authentic human community oriented towards his final destiny which is God. So forgiveness is chosen to love. It is the first skill of self-giving love, according to Mohandas K. Gandhi. That's all. Thank you.